Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm taking you along with me and we're putting this grab cap topper together. I started by cutting a variety of flower petals I needed. For this project, I used my Cricut to cut the flower petals. I used four designs and cut them in various sizes and colors. The rolled flowers are probably the most common and simple flower design to complete. Just one dab of glue is needed, but this design is so versatile. I purchased my flower templates from Etsy to support my fellow small businesses, but I also create my own, utilizing certain shapes on design space. Guys, I love my bone folder tool. I use it so much. I use it to score and create clean folds as well as using it to create texture and curl my petals for my paper flowers. I use it for both large and small paper flowers. This tool is so versatile that it is a must have in any crafter's room. The link to where I purchased mine is in the description below. Once again, here's my handy dandy glue gun. I use my glue gun to layer on my paper flowers and adhere them together. The great thing about certain flower templates is that you're not limited to only one design. You can create a variety of different flower designs and use different centers. For this design, I use my rolled flower as a center, but you can use pearls, rhinestones, glitter, beads, or other elements to create centers for your flowers. When I first purchased my Cricut, one of the first designs I uploaded was this next center design and I use it for a variety of crafts, but I personally love to use it for my paper flower centers and it looks great in glitter cardstock. You can find a variety of different paper flower petal templates on Design Space, but you can find this particular center on Design Space if you have a Cricut. Also, don't limit your colors to a single color on your flower. You can play around with layering colors as well. This particular topper had whites, creams, and light pink color hues, and I decided to add multicolors on a single flower to give it a unique look. And once again, here's the glitter cardstock center I use for most of my paper flowers. I also added a pearl element to the center to give it a fun look. I don't always use the paper flower templates as directed. Most of the time I play around with the different petals and create different designs and form them in a different way to create a unique look. Consider using two or more flower petal templates to create a single flower design. For my butterflies, I will layer on colors to give it dimension. I used light pink cardstock as the bottom of the butterfly and used a rose gold colored glitter cardstock for the top. When adhering the butterflies or the layers of butterflies together, you don't need very much glue. You could use a regular liquid glue like Elmer's glue 
but I personally like to use my glue gun because it's fast and it adheres quickly so I can move on to the next step. Here in this step, I'm bending them to give them a fluttering look. I personally love the look of borders around grad cap toppers. It not only gives it a clean look, but it also hides any imperfections to your cuts. I have used strips of pearls in the past, but I didn't like the look of those. They were mostly all too spaced out and I liked the no gap look, so I decided to place each one by hand. It's a bit time consuming, but the results are definitely worth it. And did you know that you can use heat transfer vinyl or HTV on cardstock? Many people are actually unaware or don't know, but yes, yes you can. I used my easy press and had it on a low setting and firmly pressed for approximately 15 seconds. It definitely gives it a clean look. I like to pre-assemble my flowers with no glue first to see what placement looks best. After playing around with the placement of each flower, I then glue on the paper flowers and butterflies. The customer customized her topper and wanted a space to add her own photos. So I strung twine and had these small clothespins and I added them so the pictures would look strung on the twine. I added a couple of rhinestones at the end to add more bling because you can never have enough bling.
I added pictures of myself for content purposes here, but these are the results. I hope you enjoyed the process. And if you did, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more craft moments. I do have a question. Would you like to learn how to make a beginner's ribbon lay? Let me know in the comments below.